Hello everyone, welcome to Genius Blossom. Today we are starting chapter 6 tissues from CBSC class 9 science and this is part 1 of the video. In this part we will study what tissues are, the different types of plant tissues that is meristematic and permanent tissues, the types of meristematic tissues and among permanent tissues the simple permanent tissues and let us begin with the topic tissues. Every living body is made up of cells but when millions of cells are present together how do they organize themselves? That is what we will explore in this chapter tissues. In unicellular organisms like amoeba just a single cell does everything that is moving, eating, breathing, even excretion. But in multicellular organisms, things are different. With millions of cells, most are specialized, each designed for a specific task. And this system is called the division of labor. Muscle cells contract and relax for movement. Nerve cells act like messengers. Blood works as a transport system carrying oxygen, food, hormones and waste. And in plants, vascular tissues act like pipelines moving water and food across the body. So, in multicellular organisms, cells that do the same job gather at one place and this cluster of similar cells working together is called a tissue. Tissues, they are arranged in a way that gives maximum efficiency. Examples of tissues include blood, phloem and muscles. So, what is a tissue? A tissue is simply a group of cells that work together to perform a specific function or a group of cells that are similar in structure and or work together to achieve a particular function forms a tissue. In other words, instead of each cell working alone, many cells join hands to do the same job more efficiently and this is what we call a tissue. Our next question is, are plants and animals made of the same type of tissues? Let us compare their structure and functions. Plants and animals, they are not exactly the same. Plants are stationary. That is, they remain fixed in one place. To stay upright, they need a large amount of supportive tissue and most of this supportive tissue is made of dead cells. Animals, on the other hand, can move around in search of food, shelter and mates. Since they move actively, they require more energy than plants. That is why most of the tissues in animals are made of living cells. Another important difference between plants and animals lies in their growth pattern. In plants, growth is limited to certain regions only. Some tissues in plants keep dividing throughout life and these dividing tissues are localized in specific regions and based on this property, plant tissues are classified into two types that is growing or meristematic tissues and permanent tissues. In animals, however, cell growth is more uniform than plants. That means there is no clear division between regions where cells divide and regions where they do not. Animals, when compared to plants, they have organs and systems that are highly specialized for different functions. In plants, even the most complex ones, the body parts are not as specialized. This is because animals and plants have very different lifestyles. So their body designs are also different. Plants, they usually remain fixed in one place. That is, they are sedimentary. But animals, they can move freely from place to place and this is called locomotion. And because of these differences in feeding methods and movement, the organ systems of plants and animals are designed in very different ways. Since plants and animals have complex bodies, we will now study tissues in detail. The growth of plants does not occur everywhere. It happens only in certain specific regions because dividing tissues are found only at those points and these tissues are called meristematic tissues and these meristematic tissues, they are classified based on their look location and depending on the region where they are present, meristematic tissues are classified into three types. They are epical meristem, intercalary meristem and lateral meristem. 
and the new cells produced by meristems are first like meristematic cells as they grow and mature their features change and finally they become specialized and form different permanent tissues among the different types of meristems apical meristem as the name indicates it is found at the apex of stems and roots that is it is found at the growing tips of the stems and roots then what is its function it helps to increase the length of the plant that is apical meristem is responsible for increasing the length of the plant the girth of stems and roots that means the thickness of stems and roots increases due to the activity of another meristem called lateral meristem lateral meristem it is also known as cambium so apical lateral and intercalary meristems are the three types of meristems based on their position or location but what are the characteristics of the cells of these meristematic tissues cells of meristematic tissues they are very active and they have a dense cytoplasm their cellulose walls are very thin and with the prominent nuclei and interestingly these cells do not have vacuoles can you think why remember the vacuoles generally store food or waste but meristematic cells are they are very busy in dividing so they don't store materials so they need space for active growth so vacuoles are absent in meristematic cells this is an activity from your textbook take two onion bulbs in water and cut the root tips of one onion and leave the other as it is after a few days the onion with the uncut tips shows rapid growth while the one with cut tips shows very little growth and this proves that dividing cells are present at the tips of roots what happens to the cells formed by meristematic tissue they take up a specific role and lose the ability to divide as a result they form permanent tissue and this process of taking up a permanent shape size and function it is called differentiation and differentiation leads to the development of various types of permanent tissues we can study very thin sections of plant stems under the microscope and for this a stem is cut into thin slices stained with a saffron placed in glycerin covered with a cover slip and then it is observed under a microscope and now can you tell me what is the role of saffron stain in plant tissue study saffron stain it makes the cells clearly visible and highlights the different types of cells by coloring their walls and then do you know why is glycerin used before observing the section glycerin it prevents the section from drying and keep it, keep the cells uh, clear and well prepared for observation then what do we see after placing the slide under the microscope are all cells in a plant stem section similar in structure no all cells are not similar some cells are large some are small some have thick walls and some others have thin walls and do you know why there are so many different types of cells in plants because each cell type has its own role some provide strength some transport water some transport food some store food and some perform photosynthesis then if we cut sections of roots or stems of different plants we will notice differences in arrangement which proves that plants are made of many specialized tissues for different functions our next topic is simple permanent tissues but before we begin let us recall something about the epidermis do you know what is epidermis epidermis it is the outermost protective covering of the plant body just like our skin protects us it safeguards the inner tissues of stems leaves and roots and now just beneath this epidermis we find a few layers of cells that form the simple permanent tissues when the newly formed cells lose the ability to divide and take up a permanent shape size and function they form permanent tissues and a few such layers beneath the epidermis are called simple permanent tissues 
do you know which is the most common simple permanent tissue the most common simple permanent tissue is parenchyma and these are living cells with thin walls and they are usually loosely packed leaving large intercellular spaces and their main function it is to store food and this parenchyma it can also be modified and when this parenchyma contains chlorophyll the green pigment chlorophyll it performs photosynthesis and such type of parenchyma is called chlorenchyma that is parenchyma with chlorophyll is called chlorenchyma and in aquatic plants parenchyma has large air cavities that help the plant float and such type of parenchyma with large air cavities is called parenchyma another simple permanent tissue is colenchyma and do you know what are the important characteristics of colenchyma colenchyma cells they are living elongated and thickened at the corners there is corner thickening it is an important characteristics of colenchyma cells and there is very little intercellular spaces between them and colenchyma it provides flexibility to plants one of its main function is providing flexibility to plants and that is why tendrils and stems of climbers can bend without breaking that is tendrils of and uh, stems of climbers can bend without breaking be because of the presence of this colenchyma tissue and it also gives mechanical support another function of colenchyma tissue is giving mechanical support the third type is sclerenchyma these cells they are dead and have very thick cell walls due to the presence of lignin and they are tightly packed with no intercellular spaces so the first two types of simple permanent tissues that is parenchyma and colenchyma they are living cells but the third type sclerenchyma they, their cells are dead and their cell walls are very thick because of the presence of the substance lignin then what about the function of sclerenchyma sclerenchyma it gives strength and hardness to the plant and sclerenchyma is present in many parts of the plant it is found in stems around vascular bundles in the veins of leaves and in the hard coverings of seeds and nuts the husk of a coconut also contains sclerenchyma so my dear students in this video we first understood what tissues are and why plants and animals need them then we explored plant tissues which are broadly classified into meristematic tissues and permanent tissues and we discussed in detail about meristematic tissues that is the tissues responsible for growth then we moved on to the permanent tissues beginning with a simple permanent tissue that is parenchyma colenchyma and sclerenchyma and each of these has its own structure and function parenchyma helps in storage and basic functions colenchyma provides flexibility and support sclerenchyma gives hardness and strength so up to here we have completed the introduction of tissues meristematic tissues and the first type of permanent tissues that is simple permanent tissues in the next video we will continue our discussion with complex tissues and go further thank you for watching and see you in the next class